Next on BYUSN, is the Oregon game going to be tougher for BYU than the Baylor game? And what we learned from Ty Detmer back in 1990 that can help the boys out this weekend. Well, we hope it uh, includes not drenching the field right before the game. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It's great to have you. It's Thursday, September 15th. I'm Jerem Jordan, and he is Dave McCann. Welcome to the new set, baby. It's great to be here. You were here for AFR, but uh, BYU was tucked over in this corner. Let's go, baby. The air's better. The lighting's better. The people are kinder. (laughs) Are they? The AFR's crew? I didn't know that. Well, no, just everywhere. Oh, okay. Just inside the place. It's first class. You guys aren't messing around. A lot of times you do mess around. We mess around a lot. We're not messing around It's true. We're not messing around today. Here's what's coming up on, on our show. Women's basketball coach Amber Whiting in studio with us. She brought her schedule. The non-conference slate we've been waiting for. Why BYU fans should be thanking the departing Mountain West Commissioner Craig Thompson. Sorry, what? That's right. I said thanking. Uh, he had a lot to do with where BYU is today, believe it or not. And uh, if you want to sound smarter than your coworkers, we're going to give you our BYU-Oregon game notes. You can take them to the office you know, and start throwing them around like, like you thought them up. Yeah, you That's don't even big. have to source us. Just, no. uh, just, just say, you know this thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, let's check out some headlines. First up, BYU two days away from the seventh ever matchup with Oregon. The health of Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney certainly at the forefront and in question again this week. For the latest, here's receivers coach Fessy Satake. They look a lot better than last week. Um, it's day to day. You know, it's it's it really is a game time deal. They look really good, and and it's literally day by day. So, have they been practicing? Close to full 100%. Like what's their? Uh, yeah, yeah. They've been practicing. They've been doing individual drills. Um, Percentage-wise, I'm not I'm not targeting that. Um, I just know they're running and they look good. Aren't we pretty much all game time decisions? Day to day. We expect yeah. to be there, but un- until we're there, we're a game time decision. BYU linebacker Ben Bywater, this week's Lot Impact Trophy Player of the Week. 11 tackles and a sack against Baylor. He was all over the place. That linebacking core is on fire. Max Tooley, the best of them right yeah. now. Uh, all playing very well. BYU women's basketball, as mentioned, releases its non-conference schedule. Begins Tuesday, November 8th at Old Mountain West Conference Folk, Colorado State. Other notables, Oklahoma and Provo on November 15th. Nice. Two games in Hawaii at the North Shore Showcase. Dave and I are trying to get on that trip. And Utah in town December 10th. Before league play begins, more on this with Amber Whiting coming up in the next segment. That game with the Sooners last year, wasn't that triple overtime on the road and BYU lost by one? I don't remember if it was triple, but it was definitely overtime. They were playing extra minutes. And uh, Paisley Harding went crazy or, uh, went crazy in that game. She yeah. scored a 30, I think. That was something. The payback is at the Marriott mm-hmm. Center. Big 12 preview. This, if you're feeling like there's something in the air tonight, there's volleyball in the air tonight. Number 15, BYU, is up the road at rival Utah. That's always a classic match. Met last year in the NCAA tournament here in Provo, and BYU bounced them. Cougars lead the series 73-29. to Utes coming off a loss to 12th-ranked San Diego. BYU's lost three in a row. They're going to win tonight? I think so. Okay. It's going to be a tough matchup, though. Utah's certainly tough on Crimson Court. Of note, Heather Olmstead uh, used to be an assistant at Utah, so... Of course, returning back to where she used so to So she go. knows the gym. She knows the gym. <laughs> 25th ranked women's soccer is in Ogden annexed property of Logan today at Utah State. Listen to the game on the BYU radio app at 5 Eastern. BYU trying to bounce back from that loss to Utah Valley on uh, Saturday night. All rise and shout. It's time for what's trending. The Baylor win was tough, Dave. It really was. A double overtime grinder where neither team ran for three yards of carry. It uh, wasn't uh, 1980s whack. No. Uh, it, it was not that. Now the Cougars face a 25th ranked Oregon team seeking its first FBS win for its new head coach, Dan Lanning, formerly the uh, DC at Georgia in that amazing defense last year. Boy, did he get a look at his old guys in the first game. Yeah. Uh, third best home win streak in the country at 20 games. Oregon's really tough uh, at home. Is the Oregon game going to be tougher for BYU than the Baylor game? I think it'll be tougher in the uh, different for sure. Tougher because it's on the on the road for BYU. We saw what the crowd did to Baylor when they had to do it. We've seen what the crowd did to Arizona State, what it did to Utah, what it did to Virginia in the second half last year. BYU's rock is is part of the game. Well, Oregon's got a crowd too. Their decibel levels way up. The students aren't in till the 27th. They start way the, late. The, yeah, I should have gone to Oregon. Yeah, <laughs> that whole Pac-12 <laughs> thing. Jeez. Is, they're a little bit late to everything. Um, but uh, I, nice. th- I think it'll be interesting uh, to see the crowd. BYU will have some fans in there, but it won't be anything, of course, like a, like a home game. Um, but I do like Jaron Hall as the quarterback in that setting. If there's ever a, a calming element on the football team or whatever, it's him. 
He doesn't turn it over. He beats those guys. He's 7-1 and one against P5s. Um, I, I, I like him leading the team in there, and I think they have a very good chance to win the game. If it was uh, one of the younger guys, then it'd be like, well, I'm not sure what's going to happen. But Hall marches in with a plan, and he executes it. Uh, and, and so it's another toss-up game. I thought Baylor was a toss-up game coming in. And uh, neither team turned it over. Uh, some missed kicks and go to overtime. Seems to be that's how a toss-up game should end. The last possession. So we'll see. What do you think? I think uh, Baylor is a better team than Oregon. So when it comes to just straight up on the field, that part, no, I don't think it's tougher. But I do think it's tougher because if you say, well, Oregon is a very good team. I don't know if Oregon's great, but they're certainly good to very good, right? Yeah. It's hard to know with the two extremes against Georgia and Eastern Washington. Georgia, you, you get a field goal. Eastern Washington, you score a touchdown on the first nine drives. Like, domination. 40 first downs, by the way, a program record for Oregon. So it's, it's hard to know. But this we do know. It's going to be a tough road venue. It's an afternoon game on a Saturday. Uh, you know, BYU's built to win whenever, but especially on Saturday night at home. But I like what you talked about there. Um, Jaron Hall and this team are not going to give in to the poison of being ranked 12th. Right. Remember, BYU was 5-0 and ranked 10th last year, surprised by Boise State. There would be no surprise here. Oregon is known for its speed, of course, uh, but they do have some power element to them. Uh, the win streak at home is certainly notable. Um, but BYU is a ranked team itself and is coming in as the underdog, which I kind of like in this. Because not everything is tipping BYU's way, although a lot of experts are saying, absolutely, BYU's going to win. BYU's got a better quarterback and a better offensive line. I don't believe this is going to be the slog that it was Saturday night against Baylor in the trenches. BYU couldn't run and still won. But neither could Baylor. And Baylor didn't have the quarterback that BYU has. Bo Nix certainly has experience at Auburn. And uh, the OC for Oregon was at Auburn in 2019. That's the connection there. That's why I went to Eugene. Is, uh, it, it, BYU's got that part of it going. Also, the experience of being in Autzen for a couple of guys, I think, matters. Christopher Brooks has played in Autzen. In fact, I went to a game in 2019 that I've referenced this week where I saw Cal play Oregon. Christopher Brooks scores a touchdown in that game yeah. receiving. He's played four games against Oregon. Not a ton of success, 3.2 yards per carry. But he didn't have the offensive line that BYU has going into this game. Um, Klein Satake at Utah and at Oregon State, notably in the Civil War, has coached four times against Oregon. He's been in Austin for, uh, it was more than that actually, at least four times as an opposing coach. So Kalani knows what it's like to be there. But ultimately, this comes down to those players executing on the field. Oregon didn't have a 20 plus yard pass play against an FCS team last week. I, don't, I think BYU comes in more powerful on the offensive line with a better offense. Tons of experience. I think this is the most experienced team BYU's ever had thanks to COVID. And then uh, the Ducks defensively still figuring it out. Just two sacks and six TFLs through two games. Again, that includes an FCS team. I think BYU's the better team, and I think they'll show up and play like These it. aren't the same Ducks that we've watched the last little while. The one their coach left for another job. Now, they're rebuilding. These are the Ducks rebuilding. they got plenty of four and five stars, mostly four stars, um, on the recruiting thing. But um, I know they lost a five-star. They, they did lose a five-star, yeah. and he's going back. Uh, but it, it's interesting. They haven't played well as of late. They've lost four of their last six. Got beat by Utah twice. Um, got pounded by Georgia, who's the best team in the country. But this BYU game to them is a measuring stick for the Ducks. Sure. It, does it forgive them getting pounded by Georgia? To the biased East Coast media, absolutely it does. They'll probably rank them fifth in the country uh, <laughs> if they beat BYU. They rank, what, I don't understand those guys. Out of the gate? Yeah, last year they should have been out of the poll for the last two months. Or at least the last month, the they Ohio kept, State they kept in there carried a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah. and um, so I, so I think they're trying to find themselves. But 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 BYU's not walking into uh, Austin five years ago, fa facing those ducks that were thinking about national championships and stuff. These ducks aren't even thinking about that. They're thinking, can they compete with Utah in the Pac-12? Yes, can they win the North again? Because yeah. they have the last three years. Although Washington didn't go, Oregon went in their place. And uh, the Pac-12 has been ago. so bad as of late. Maybe USC rises everybody up. Perhaps. And we'll talk about that coming up with uh, John Wilner, who thinks BYU is better than USC uh, in his Best in the West poll. We'll, we'll say whether we agree later. But it's interesting because if this BYU team can't go there and do it, what BYU team could? Right. Because they're so experienced. you got the senior quarterback. You mentioned the stat we've loved this week, which is Jaron Hall 7-1 and versus P5s. He's 3-0 against ranked P5s, I believe. Never has a BYU team or a BYU quarterback been as prepared to go in like this. 
and we're gonna we're gonna address this uh, coming up a little bit later as well. Is that 1990 game? You'd think that team was better prepared than this team, right? Ranked top five in the country, eventual Heisman winner at Oregon. Uh, you know, rumor has it they uh, drenched the field before to just slow BYU down. Is BYU known for speed in that way? Uh, I don't know. No. But that team didn't go in and win that day. I, I think this team is more prepared than the traditional WAC and Mountain West teams, Dave. Not only from an extra year from COVID, but they've played schedules that no other groups in BYU history have. So when they walk into Oregon, they can pull on, no, we played at Tennessee, we played at USC, we played at Wisconsin, we've won those three particular games, we've lost our share, but we know what it takes to win, and we've got the horses. Bowie has the horses in a way that I can't remember walking into a season being this confident about BYU's ability to go win this game before. Especially after beating Baylor. Now, now in right. August, it was like, okay, Baylor's probably going to be the toughest game. Uh, having we beat, thought Notre Dame. Yeah, it was Notre Dame, and, and now they've, they're gone. But we, after, the, after the Baylor win, now it's all of a sudden, okay, well, can we, can, now we've got to go to Oregon. Well, that was always going to be tough, and it's, it is tough. But this BYU team under Jaron Hall doesn't turn the ball over. Hall 7-1 and one against P5s. In those seven wins, three turnovers. That's it. And one of those turnovers, Tyler Algier got back. So two turnovers in seven wins against P5 at home, on the road, and on a neutral location. So if BYU goes in Saturday and takes care of the football, those are the teams that win on the road. Absolutely. So I, I like that number, and I like this team with that quarterback to go do that. I believe this game will be um, messier than the Baylor game in terms of turnovers. I think a few happen here. It's whether BYU can win that turnover battle. Because when you're on the road, you got you got to take care of the ball. And Aaron Roderick told us uh, last year in preparation for the game on BYU TV, Jaron Hall doesn't give the ball away. And BYU's got a nice one-two punch with Christopher Brooks. Hopefully it's a rebound game that way. And if you, you can't run on Baylor, it's okay. Baylor's front seven was super legit. Yeah. I believe that Oregon has a good defense, but not as strong as Baylor's front seven. I believe the back end for Oregon is probably stronger than the back end for Baylor. But we'll see if that BYU defense can replicate that performance, Dave, because Baylor's inability to run with an inexperienced quarterback, that combo was good. Under 300 yards allowed, 20 points allowed in double OT. That was an amazing performance from the BYU defense. Yeah, and, and the guys weren't open downfield. Uh, BYU sacked uh, Shapin four times, as we showed you on AFR on Tuesday, uh, or on the BYU TV app whenever you want. There was nobody open. They had a couple of balls. What did he throw for, 120-something yards or something? Nothing. But, but we showed you plays where there's just nobody open. Yep. And you know what? Oregon's receivers aren't any faster than Baylor's receivers. Baylor's receivers are the Big 12 champion receivers. They haven't had bad recruiting classes. Um, and, so, and they just could not get open. Can Oregon's guys just magically get open because they got an O on their helmet? Or a Nike. Not a, or a Nike. <laughs> Which BYU has as well. Not on this secondary. This secondary is good. The defensive line was the question coming in. Their first big test was not South Florida. They're ahead 21 to nothing after three possessions or whatever. The first big test was against Baylor, and they returned four offensive line starters, and BYU sacked their quarterback four times. Uh, and then they had him running uh, a few other times. An A. What were the first test? The defensive line gets an A against Baylor, number nine in the country. Can they, we didn't even give them an A against South Florida. No. You no, know what I mean? Yeah. Can they do that again? I don't know if they have to do that again. Will they hold their ground? Yeah, that's what they do now. And they got guys behind them that hold their ground. The four linebackers, five if you count Tanavasa, are healthy and playing great. Keenan Peely in the backfield as the quarterback. It was so interesting to watch him make sure everyone was in position. Man, did they miss that last year after he went down with his ACL. Huge difference. Now they're going the on the road. You know, they had a tough road game at Baylor. It was loud, a good team, whatever, and there's no Peely. You know, now they go into an environment like that, and, they're, and your defensive quarterback and your offensive quarterback are at the top of their games. And I think that is huge in, a, in this kind of environment. We'll see, but, man, going in, I like, you, I, like, I like your confidence because if you look at the personnel, the better team is the visiting team coming into this game. Which is pretty wild. Vegas thinks otherwise. Home field getting right. some... Uh, three, three and a half yep. for home field. Yep, almost four. And you know what? Had Old Roy made a kick, Vegas would have been spot on last week as BYU was a three-point favorite against Baylor. Well then. Now, they know go. what they're doing down there. They, and home field the really is about do. three points. It matters. Okay, our question of the day. Do you believe the matchup with Oregon will be tougher than Baylor? Yes or no? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. Matt Brown, N, uh, Matt Brown, Triple I on Instagram. 
Nope, and for one simple reason. BYU will run the ball very effectively against Oregon. When the running game is working, everything else gets easier. BYU overcame that last week. Yeah. Overcame that. And it wasn't like BYU was just chucking it down the field left and right. There was a few moments where Chase Roberts gets open. The longest play of the game is, what, a 37-yarder to Chase Roberts? And, and then at the end of the half, that uh, 20-yard throw to Chase. So... If BYU can run the ball, they're in business. I, think I Chris, believe they will. I think Chris Brooks has been challenged this week in practice to hit the hole with some reckless abandon. There were holes there. He just didn't hit them in that game. Uh, he's got to hit them faster. Algier evolved into a guy who could hit a hole. He didn't always do it, but by the time he was at full speed, he hit every hole. Uh, Brooks has that same potential, but I think that's where we'll see him attack a little differently. If BYU's got Puka Nakua in the mix this week, think about it. you got an ex-Washington receiver out there, right tackle from Oregon, a running back from Cal, and a former defensive coordinator in the Pac-12 uh, in Kalani Sataki as the head coach. you got all these Pac-12 guys who have been in this situation before. I like that. Yeah, and they don't lose the Pac-12. At least they haven't. Five-game win streak that's from last awesome. year. All right, so Saturday, BYU Sports Nation game day will get you started. 1.30 Eastern time. It's a two-hour. That's how we do it now on game day, a two-hour countdown to the kickoff, which is on Fox at 3.30 Eastern time. So Spencer will be live in Eugene, and we'll be live here in our studio, 1.30 Eastern time on Saturday. It's going to be another day for the ages. Spence, don't eat the brownies. Next up, women's hoops coach <laughs> Amber Whiting is in studio. A first look at her first schedule as the head coach of the Cougs. This is BYU Sports Nation. Let's go, BYU Women's Hoops season beginning in November. Uh, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Jerem Jordan, Dave McCann, over on the comfortable chairs. This is where it's at, right? This we gotta, is where the we got to be over here way the more. Tough often. questions come in the comfortable <laughs> chairs. Yes, they do. Okay, welcome back to the show. We got Amber Whiting in the house, uh, women's basketball coach, first year coach. Welcome uh, back Thank to the you. show, New Digs. Welcome. Thank you. This is awesome in here. I like it. We're uh, we're stoked, and we're stoked that we have the non-conference schedule out for BYU now. Now that you know you got a schedule, what's it like is, okay, your first year, now you know who you're going to attack here. Yes, um, we're excited. The girls have been in the gym with more intention than just during summer practices, right? Now that they see who we're playing and what we're doing. and So, yeah, we're excited to get after it. There seems to be a buzz, uh, especially in the clips that have been put out on social media mm -hmm. of practice and uh, so many new faces because you lost so many older faces. Uh, and, and the newest face of all, of course, is the boss. <laughs> How's that all gelling? <laughs> um, the girls, I mean, I have to hand it to them. Like, I'm not who they committed to, right? But they have, like, welcomed me. And if there's one thing I can say about them, they are, like, the hardest working group. I don't ever, ever have to coach the effort and the energy in the gym. It's just there every day, which I love. So That's nice. Then you yeah. can get into the other stuff, right? Yes, That's a yes, good uh, baseline. Yes. Before we get to the, to the teams, do you remember that scene in Hoosiers when they go into the, to Indianapolis? What, what arena? They're going in to play the championship. Hinkle Fieldhouse. Hinkle Fieldhouse. Yeah. And they go in there and they shout and they hear the echoes and oh. then they measure and all that. So you've been at Burley High School for a few years mm -hmm. and now you come into practice. Do you ever stop and look around at this cavernous Marriott Center, 20,000 really plus, this? and you're like, this is my... This is my, this is my office now it's crazy every day when i walk in there it's just like this uh overwhelming feeling of just like gratefulness like this is my dream yeah and i'm living this right so i just try and soak up every moment i have little tape measure goes up <laughs> yep 10 feet, ten yes. feet. i knew just it like yeah. i knew it back in burley okay let's break down the schedule but obviously let's talk about the elephant in the room which was there was a two-game series with south carolina scheduled mm -hmm. They saw initially what happened with Duke. They chose not to uh, not to schedule with BYU. I know you guys were looking forward to that game. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you've replaced that game? Certainly not of that caliber, but um, I guess what's your reaction to what they what they did with that and what you kind of replaced them with? My girls were really looking forward to that game, right? Mm -hmm. But I just talked to them about controlling the controllables. Like we just have to stay in the moment, and it doesn't matter who we play because at the time. We didn't have anybody on the table, right? But it doesn't matter who we play. We just got to get after it and go out there and fight like we would normally, like we were going to against South Carolina. So I know that it was not what they wanted, but it's okay. We'll be fine. So you get Colorado State over in Fort Collins uh -huh. on the 8th, which is a Tuesday. Is that election day or is that a week after? Yes. Ooh, probably election Might day, yeah. It's election yeah. day. There's a, and I've thought the same thing, there's a, um, a thing that you can submit 
but I give them a day off that week prior so they have their... To vote, because yeah. yes. the NCA allows the time for... Yes. You give them a full day to check their mail-in ballot and put it in the box. Full That's day, nice. I can't touch it. It's like five years. minutes. <laughs> I know. Uh, but you get Colorado State, uh, and I think the first exhibition game I counted was like 43 days away. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. That's not very much time, and you're on. Yep, we're excited. Yeah. Get in the fight. What do you feel like between now and then you've got to do to be ready for that November 8th uh, opener? Um, it's getting us on the same page for a lot of things, right? And there's so much that we have to implement. And I'm learning the style and the, the um, how I can implement it, right? Because different kids learn it different ways. So I'm learning that. Um, they're learning me. They're learning my coaching staff. Like, I just feel like we're... The last week, the practices have really picked up. And things have started clicking. And that for me, I had a little bit of anxiety at first, like, I hope this works. And now it's working. And now I'm like, okay, let's go. Like, what's the next? Let's, you know, I just start, and my staff's always like, Amber, chill. We got time. And I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> it's September. We'll <laughs> no. be all right. We'll be all right. I know. So, would you rather be a coach that inherits a program that has won 30 straight home games or has lost 30 straight home games? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> there, it, I have big shoes to fill. Like, I really do. Yeah. And they have big shoes to fill, right? Yeah. But um, anybody that comes in a gym and watches my girls, they can see they're hungry. They're getting better. Their eyes, like, you could just see inside them. They're, they're thirsty. They're, you know, they want the, that yeah. coaching. They want the push. They want, and they don't shy away from it, which is what I love. We're talking to Amber Whiting, the women's basketball coach here at BYU, ahead of her first season at the helm. Let's talk about who you have on the schedule. Notably, Oklahoma sticks out. That's a return game from last year in Norman, a, a tough loss for the Cougars. Uh, nice uh, multi-team event in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Well done. Well, well done. done. Washington well done. State, that's also a, a repeat game, I believe, mm -hmm. from last year. Uh, Utah at home is always going to be a big one at Boise State. Kind of what sticks out about what you put together, and what did it take to make this schedule? Um, well, I don't really have a lot of hands in like Lee does my schedule he'll walk down hey do you think about it you know and I kind of talk about what days of rest and where we should go and um but I honestly one game at a time that's my and that's always been my thing right I know where I open Colorado State and then I know what's coming next but I don't go there I just one game at a time that's where I stick I need you to talk about Gonzaga on February 25th can you break that down right now because it's like 31 <laughs> games at a time what are the keys in that one oh. <laughs> we got a rebound we got a big, um, what kind of schedule did you want because it's your first year mm -hmm. you lost some notable pieces of course you kind of have to establish uh, what's the drum beat going to be like with you at the helm. What kind of schedule were you hoping for? I don't want an easy one, right? Like I want something that's going to push our girls so then when we hit the WCC, we're ready to go. Um, and then hopefully the goal is to make the MCA tournament. And then when you get there, you've played those caliber teams up front. So you know what it's to expect. It's not like all of a sudden you're walking and you have never done that before. So... So non-conference, those kind of teams, Oklahoma, Washington State, Utah, and others, that's, mm -hmm. there's enough of them to feel good. And you want to put yourself in an at-large spot should you mm -hmm. get to that point as well, right? Yep. You feel like this schedule does that for you? I feel like it's good for us right now. And I feel like it, there's games that we can get that confidence, and there's also games that we got to go in and fight. So I feel like it's a good balance right now. And then does that change next year when you get in the Big 12 with a lot of certain that toughness? Obviously a tougher conference that mm -hmm. way. It's going to be, I mean, every night we're going to be out there fighting, right? So yeah. um, I do want a couple marquee games up front so that we can get ready for the Big 12. But then obviously we're going to have our MT events and things like that. So, yeah. When's the last time you've been in the Marriott Center to watch the, the women play? Last year? Was it last no, year? No, wait, two years ago. Two years, years ago. ago. So you've seen it. it. It's become an event. Yes. And it's huge. Uh, and and there have been some great atmospheres in there. The Gonzaga game last year, um, you know, felt like a men's game. Mm -hmm. And the, the whole lower concourse was in there, and the band, and and this and that. The curtain and, drop was amazing. The curtain yeah, drop, and great. and the, and uh, everything that the men get, the women now get, which is awesome, especially in all the pre you know, one lineup stuff. And, and we, we made comments last year of like, you know, this, this has gone from, uh, you know, 25 people in the gym, mostly parents, to uh, a destination for, for the rock that's still here. And They love it. And uh, so you're going to be warmly received by, you'll come out and there's going to be people there. <laughs> that's going to um, be great. Yeah, we have a great marketing team. Um, we met with them yesterday yeah. as um, with the players because we want the players involved, right? But our goal is to get 10,000 
people in the stands. Like, that's a goal, right? And then Natalie has this, I mean, amazing things that, you know, she's going to do things if we get that goal to get more people coming. And so I just feel like we are building and going to the Big 12 is going to help a lot. Listen, that does not mean you need 10,000 fourth graders in that stand because you can get them. You, in might, have to mute. But then you there, might have to mute that game. There's, there's stuff that comes with all those fourth graders. I know where you can find 10,000. Screaming, I know. It's hey, awesome. It's, it's awesome if you love nursery. We're talking to Amber Whiting on BYU Sports Nation. Tell us about uh, one of your other new assistants, Aaron Kulhoff, who has come all the way across the country, uh, been been a, at a lot of different places, mm -hmm. probably the uh, throwing the most weight around uh, on the staff, I imagine, as well. Yes, he's hard to keep under wraps some days. <laughs> <laughs> he brings a lot of energy, and that's what I need and I love, right? And so, yeah, he brings that positive energy to help the girls, like, amp up, and I love, I love what he brings. How'd you find him? Um, he had recruited my daughter back in the day, but then we had always stayed in contact just through the whole thing going through the process. And so he's somebody that I've always, you know, been easy to talk to, connected with, and so it's good. When you size up your roster and, and you have some newcomers, but you got to practice and you look at uh, Lauren Gustin, who potentially will be the number one rebounder in the country, you can build around that. Oh, yes, of course. She's our cheat code. Like, yeah. We love her. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's amazing. How's then, her game evolved? Um, she's working a lot on her mid-range and her pull-ups, right? Yeah. Like, but we want to just play to her strengths, right? Like when, and I, when the ball goes inside, I've said to her a lot, like, I don't want it coming back out. Unless you're double team triple, you are going up, because there's a lot of times that she'll like look at it and I'm like, mm -mm, just go up. That's what I want from her. So we've been doing that. Who else do you f expect to fill in right away in certain key positions, given the fact that there was a lot of experience that came back with the next year of COVID mm -hmm. last year? I think um, with between Nani and Ari and Kaylee and our new um, Gabby that came in from ASU, mm -hmm. um, within those four guards, I got a lot of playmakers that can you know, dish and create shots and do things. I got a lot of girls that can knock down threes. Um, Emma can stretch it really well. Rose brings so much energy. Like, I got a lot of girls, a lot of pieces. And they, the beautiful thing is they play for each other in practice, right? They love the extra pass. They love the – so even sometimes I'm like eyes to the rim. Like, you drive and you're looking to pass. How about drive and get your eyes up, right? So there's a lot of times where um, – they play for each other so much that it's it's so pretty when it works. But there's times that I'm like, come on, like you know, just take a little selfishness. Be a little yes, selfish. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When's yeah. first the first practice? Um, September 26, I believe. A Monday. Yep. About a week. And it wasn't going to be a Monday. It wasn't when our schedule changed, right? So technically, we can still say Monday, but we have to have within our 20 hours. All the rules. All these rules you've oh had to learn. What's oh that been my. like for you coming from high school to college where it's like, well, now the, uh, the law book is uh, pretty thick. My thick staff now. on the way over here, don't do this, this, and this. Like, I'm like, I know. <laughs> In this interview? <laughs> yes, this interview, because they know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I can't talk about a recruit's name or I can't do this. So they're There's certain like, complications yeah, even they're associated always, with your daughter and what we yes, can say on the air or not, yes, right? They're yeah. always like, be careful. I'm like, I know, I know. It's Isn't fun for us, too. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it so cool, though, that you've, one, we got, you, you got your, quite an entourage in here with you this morning, but this is, you're in the show now. This it's is crazy. This is this is the big time, and that's and what you, we said to you, you coming in this that. morning too. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> like, what hey, they said. Hey, welcome to the show, dude. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, this is this is, uh, this is different, mm -hmm. and and you deserve it, and we're excited to watch you play. Thank watch you. Watch you coach. Thank you. Well, awesome. Yeah, if you do a player coach thing, that may be uh, you know uh, that hasn't happened since Bill Russell. Maybe, save that for a BYU yeah. TV game if you're going to put yourself in the lineup. If you're going to do that, <laughs> just save that for us. Yeah, we okay. can do. We we should do me, media versus media preseason or something. That's, That'd yeah, be that fun, would, right? That would be fun. I want to see Dave hucking up some threes in a free throw competition. My money's on you over Coach Pope. I'll tell you that much. Ew, yeah. that's good to know. But if it's down Same low, if he's posting you up, yeah, I'm done. That's not going to yeah. happen. I don't know if he still has the jump hook though. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> well, Amber, we're super excited about the season. Thank Practice you. Practice September twenty. 26th, as you mentioned. First game, uh, November 8th, and there's a Westminster exhibition October 27th. Come check out as well. Good luck with everything. Thank Thanks you. for coming Thank in. Thank you. Thanks for having me Hey, on. come back more often, all right? Okay, I you will. Can, you can bring the entourage or you can just come yourself. Okay. Either way. <laughs> we'll show you where the back door is. You can come in whenever you want. <laughs> okay. Hey, coming up today, 25th, BYU Soccer, trying to get their offense going. Let's go. Got a lot to replace from last season. They're up in Logan. It'll be cool, probably rainy. 5 o'clock Eastern time. You can find it on the BYU radio app. 
And then they're back here Saturday night against Utah. That's at 9 Eastern here on BYU TV and the BYU TV and radio apps. The Utes and Cougars in soccer. That'll be the place we after BYU beat to Oregon in football. To big come night. Then, do that. It's a super Saturday. It's a big night. After the break, why BYU fans should be thanking Mountain West Conference retiring Commissioner Craig Thompson? What? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. This is BYU Sports Nation to interact with the show and get great content throughout the day like we just had with Coach Whiting. Follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Dave. I am Jerem. Let's whip it. The Cougar Whip Round is presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. So, BYU, their win over Baylor moves them up from a Tier 4 to a Tier 3 team, according to our friends at Fox. Fox is televising the game on Saturday. Would a win over Oregon move them up to a Tier 2? Kentucky, Michigan, Arkansas, Michigan State right there? I think so. If BYU beats Oregon on Saturday, the Cougars are in the top 10 next week, Dave. I, I think Tier 2 is appropriate there. Definitely not Tier 1. That's another level. That is, and there is a giant difference between Georgia, Alabama, and, and everybody else. Michigan State has defeated Western Michigan and Akron, so real tough schedule. But the zips the didn't have any weeks. zips. They had game. no there zip. No that zip. is for They're at Washington on Saturday. We'll learn a little bit about yep. Michigan State. Yep, more of a challenge. BYU and Oregon, by the way, both have played two ranked teams after this week in the first three games. Tough schedule. John Wilner released his best of the West power rankings as BYU number one. Do you agree? How can they not be? here in the West. Now, that means that he's got him over USC. Mm -hmm. USC hasn't played anybody yet. I mean, Stanford, but Stanford's been down. We're not sure how good Stanford is. We'll um, see him later in the year. USC will have some tests coming up, but uh, maybe their biggest test will be how they play up in Salt Lake when, when they face the Utes. But hey, BYU beat USC last November, so if you're looking for a... I get it. I, I can see, I can see, and if BYU beats Oregon, then who out West haven't they beat? Up to this point, the last uh, two it, seasons. we would just need a head-to-head -head with USC to really determine that this year. Perhaps. This year, yeah. With Lincoln Riley. But if you look at the last... As of now? Sure. 18 number months, one. who haven't they not beat out here in the 10 again? USC is top 10 because history, not because this year. And because Lincoln Riley. History and future. Yeah. Right. Not not now, although they have looked pretty good. Yeah, well, but the future is actually not going to be as good as it was in the Pac-12. They're going to get... Yeah. It's a tougher conference. It'll be a yeah. much tougher conference. But yeah, number one in the West. And, and a win Saturday solidifies it and puts BYU in the top 10. There aren't many top 10 teams in the West anymore. Nope. Uh, USC's hanging out in there and, and hey. Is Oklahoma considered a Western team by those on the East Coast? I don't think so. I right? don't think so. But Ohio is still called the Midwest by everybody. That makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> Midwest in 1850, <laughs> yes. All right, Mountain West Conference Commissioner Craig Thompson announced he's gonna step down at the end of the year. Looking back, uh, what would you like to thank Commissioner Thompson for as he retires? For helping get BYU eventually to the Big 12 by leaving the Mountain West Conference and having the same TV money deal with Wyoming. Uh, obviously, there was some issues between Craig Thompson and BYU. The Cougars, though, formed the Mountain West, as you mentioned, uh, with Craig Thompson uh, in 99. They chose Craig Thompson. Eventually, things went sour with the inability to rebroadcast. Uh, on this channel and other issues, and ultimately the hairdo, as some call him. He, uh, he, he kept the Mountain West relevant despite BYU, TCU, and Utah leaving. And uh, yeah, best of luck in retirement. But the mountain is really the sore spot among the Cougar fans, of course, not being able to watch their games nationally and in HD. BYU helped create that monster of the mountain, uh, and it didn't work out for them. Uh, so part of that's on BYU back in the day when they, BYU and Utah put the Mountain West Conference together and they brought in Craig Thompson. Um, and so here's the guy you're dancing with. You, you asked him out. Uh, I thought he did a lot of really good things. Uh, in the end, I thought he listened to the wrong people. You can't listen to Wyoming and Colorado State and, and ignore BYU and, and even Utah. You just can't. Um, because then BYU and Utah are gonna leave and look what you're left with. He turned around yep. to Boise State and he did everything for Boise State he should have done with BYU. And BYU probably would still be in the league today, uh, preparing for the Big 12, hopefully. Big, they didn't just get invited because they were independent. Right. But um, so a lot of credit to him, but then also there's some faults and none of us are perfect. He just listened to the wrong guys at the wrong time and it cost him the marquee team in the league. But after that, he's managed to keep that group together. 
No. So. I do need to ask him what product he uses in the hair. <laughs> that needs to happen. Well, you, he may, you may rival him. <laughs> with what you he's got, he's got more poof than I do. <laughs> uh, tonight marks the beginning of Thursday night NFL games exclusively on Amazon Prime Video with the Chargers at the Chiefs. How closely should BYU fans and Big 12 fans be watching the success of those games? First, I got to find it. And it's on Amazon Prime Video. Yeah, yeah I gotta go. I gotta go there. Maybe I have to subscribe. I don't know. I haven't really thought. Tell me you're through. older without tell, telling me you're older, Dave. <laughs> My wife will take care. Of <laughs> New media has to be discovered and followed, and yep. so yeah, I think we should be interested in seeing the game's going to look the exact same. The same professionals. Yes. Al Michaels is the play-by-play guy, so it's going to sound and look the NFL. same. Yeah. Uh, but as far as access to it, um, that's the key. And if that is the road toward more fan access, and you know the Big 12's looking at everything, they're open for business, um, why not? So what I want to do is I want to be able to watch my team whenever I want. And I think now we're to the point where it's like, it doesn't just have to be on ESPN for it to be legit. Can I see it wherever I'm at? And here's an avenue where Amazon Prime's going, see it with us. It's really a question of uh, money here because I don't think that the Big 12 is going to go with an Amazon Prime for its primary provider, perhaps secondary tertiary, a specific game, right? The Friday night game of the week from the Big 12 if they want to do something like that or a Thursday. But uh, yeah, ultimately, uh, you probably want your primary on ESPN just for the access. You want your first three games on the big show. Yeah, Fox in there as well. I would imagine that will stay. That's what currently is. But I wonder if Amazon Prime gets into uh, the college game. And certainly there's an opening with the Big 12 coming up uh, in two years. If it's a bust with the NFL, because the NFL's taking a gamble here, because Thursday nights used to be on NBC or Fox, Amazon paid enough to buy out the bust. So the NFL's making so much money from them, they're willing to go, yeah, we'll give you Thursday night. That's how committed Amazon is to making this work. And so then if it doesn't, the NFL doesn't lose. You know, they're getting a boatload of money and then they can go, well, okay, we're gonna go back to one of these other guys. And so they, I think everyone's watching this. And they got rings of power at a bill. Yeah. Which yeah, I've been watching and it's fantastic. It's been worth every penny that I didn't have to spend. I just uh, watch it. Shout out to the brother-in-law who's got the actual account, right? All right. Who actually owns a Netflix account? Is everyone bumming off everyone else? <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't. It's in my house. I don't even know where it came from. But I, I don't. I don't. Uh, one of the hidden talents of the late Queen Elizabeth, who recently passed, Wee Bowling. That was just revealed from, yep. from the castle. Uh, she apparently loved it, played against her grandsons. Uh, she was given a gold Wii console. Gold? Gold. What's well, the queen? She's the queen. Uh, if you uh, were to have something gold plated, what would it be? Like replica gold plates would be nice. Book of Mormon. Also, a gold plated grill. I would wear that on this program uh, at least once a week. Yeah, that's what I would do. What would you do? You'd, you'd have a gold plated grill? Yeah, dude. Like 50 cent or what? Yeah, 50 cent, but yeah. 50 cent? Yeah. I think uh, I wouldn't, I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> I don't know. I think you can do I just, whatever you want it. I just take it to the bank, put it there, just wear all. Is gold still worth something? Is yeah, that a, is that a thing? Like I have it. no idea. They're still looking for it. So is it worth more than Bitcoin? Good. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that wraps up the whip. What's uh, what's coming up here? That was a good whip. I thought we accomplished quite a bit. <laughs> we got a lot done we today. Discovered a lot gold of things. Gold-plated grills and Queen Elizabeth and Craig Thompson. Yeah, fifteenth-ranked BYU volleyball, big one tonight against Utah. Huge. You can see it on the Pac-12 network. I believe it's a nine Eastern start. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. This is a big one. Got, Haven't been winning win. for a while. Haven't been winning for a while. They need to start doing that. Three-game losing streak. Got to show up. Okay, want to be smarter than your friends about Cougar football this weekend? You didn't even have to say, yeah, Dave McCann said this. You just use it. We got you covered in the next segment with Game Notes, BYU and Oregon. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live from the revamped Studio B. Still getting used to it. Just stay for here. Looks good. Looks good. Okay, it's time for Game Notes. This is where we discuss different pieces of information about the BYU-Oregon matchup. Help you out, you know. If, if you don't like it, you can look it up your own stuff. But we got you. You can sound smart with the homies. So we're going to each spit out some different pieces of information and then discuss. So here we go. Kalani Satake, and I mentioned this earlier, has coached four times against Oregon as the opposing coordinator. In Eugene, Christopher Brooks has played four games against the Ducks, scored a touchdown in Autzen. 
I think that experience helps in this situation. BYU's not walking into a place nobody has ever been. Plus, BYU's played in big stadiums before. Austin is the next one on the list. Yeah, it seats, what, 54,000? They just played in front of 63? Yes, they did. Uh, and they've been in NFL stadiums. Uh, I, think, uh, I think you're right. I think uh, the, the venue is, the noise is going to be the factor, not the venue. And if you take care of the football, the noise quiets down because yeah. the fans are frustrated and... And I think that's it. By the way, uh, so Matt uh, Kearney is a musician who has this song called Coming Home. They play it during the game. It's about Oregon. And they mix in, like, organ clips. Oh, yeah? I, I almost started crying when I saw it in 2019. It was great. That's it was great. That's, that's your place. The Oregonians there. will enjoy it. But, uh, yeah, no cougar clips in that one. Yeah, there'll be a lot of cougar fans in there watching it. Totally. Uh, 32 years ago this month, Ty Detmer goes in there. Uh, the He'll join the program tomorrow. And he'll be on the show tomorrow. And we can ask him about this specifically. Uh, anyway, they, they rank fourth. Um, they get hammered in the afternoon. It was an ABC game, I think. It was just like, hey, he's on ABC now because they beat Miami. And, and, uh, and, and Ty got picked off five times. That's why they lost that game. I think it was 32-16 to 16 was the final. Um, but, but they gave the ball away five times, which jacked up the crowd. And it was just an awful scene for, for BYU who went in against an unranked Oregon team. Well, here we go against a team that's barely ranked. They just got back to 25, Oregon. Here comes Jaron Hall and the Cougars after beating uh, the ninth-ranked Bears, which, by the way, was the first top-10 win at home since Ty beat Miami. How about that connection? So, you know, whoosh, world's getting smaller here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and so they go in there, and yeah, it doesn't matter. The personnel, the, the, the players in that game have kids that are old enough to play in this game. True. Or be graduated, I think. Byron uh, Rex has a kid in this game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I think the, the gist of it is you go in there and you take care of the football, and you can win that game. Ty went in there, and they didn't take care of the football. That's why they lost. Still won 10 games that year. He won the Heisman Trophy, but on that day, he needed to protect the football. And so are the similarities from a game 32 years ago against, with two very good quarterbacks? Yeah, if this current quarterback takes care of the ball, they can do what, what Ty couldn't do that day, which was stay on the field and win the game. Turnovers will matter in this game. Yeah. I don't imagine we'll have a turnover-less game again where it's like, all right, this is an even fight. That is a great equalizer for the lesser team. So I think turnovers uh, will play a this role. This is a very disciplined BYU team. They don't Re- it really much is. Either. It really is. Yeah. 14 penalties for Baylor on the weekend, by the yeah. way. The Cougar defense hasn't allowed 300 yards in a game or more than 21 points through two games. Incredible showing. South Florida, obviously, you jump out like 31 or 38 nothing, right? Last week, uh, no, no takeaways, but sub 300 yards and 21 points, you're going to win. 95% of those games, it feels like. That's been incredible from the defense. Yeah, and even you go back last year, they hold Arizona under 20, Utah under 20, Arizona, Arizona State. State under 20, yep. Washington State on the road under 20. They won all those games. They beat USC. That was kind of a wild shootout once, yep. it, once it got going there. But that's how they won their five games against the Pac-12. And every uh, game's different. Yeah. Like, this won't be last week's game. I think BYU's going to be able to run the ball. We'll see if Oregon can run the ball. Uh, Ducks have won 29 straight games at home against non-conference teams. BYU is a non-conference team. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, Jaron Hall 7-1 against P5s. Okay, something's got to give here mm-hmm. on, on Saturday. Yep. Uh, my money's on the quarterback because good pitching always beats good hitting in the World Series yep. uh, or in the really big, big games. Uh, and so i gotta, I got to bank that, that the pitcher is Hall. The batters that want to hit it out of the park is Oregon. And, uh, and, and pitching beats, beats hitting. I, I, mean, I think that's going to be the case. And then they'll snap that streak. They've snapped a lot of streaks over the years. Ask Nebraska. Here's home, another one. Home win streak, yeah, they right? still haven't recovered. Ask Wisconsin yeah. on its uh, home win streak, right? Okay, Oregon has the fourth most underclassmen in the country. In fact, 76% of the roster is underclassmen, meaning freshmen and sophomores. BYU comes in super experienced. They've already got this fake national narrative that they're, because of missions, they have this advantage like BYU's older. BYU has everything going for it going into this game. Like, almost literally everything but where the game is played, which is very exciting. I love that if BYU is 0-2, no one even brings up how old they are. They're like, well, wait, how come they lost? They are they went got on outplayed. missions. They're older and slower. They never say that. They just got outplayed. But when they're 2-0, and it's like, well, here's why. Yeah. They're older. and uh, Here's why they have NFL linemen, you know, that weren't freshmen that could wear last year or some of them. Haven't had a ton recently. They're about to have a bunch. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's why they're... Where, they're where they're at. Uh, and turnovers, we talked about it a moment ago. Mm-hmm. 5-0 in the Pac-12 with, uh, with three turnovers. 
Uh, you throw two more P5 wins in, and it's still at three turnovers. And as mentioned, Tyler Algier got one of those backs, which is two. Two in, in that mix, that's how you beat good teams. That's how Georgia beats good teams. That's how Alabama beats good teams. That's how Ohio State beats good teams. Well, you just go down there, and there's the number 12 team in the country. This is how they're beating good teams, taking the ball away. They didn't force any turnovers against Baylor, but they didn't give any up. So, you know, that's a win. As long as you are, are at least even or ahead in the turnover margin, you've got a chance to win every single game. Unless you show up against Georgia and they're just better. They're just better. Yeah, that one's tough. Okay, last note. All Pac-12 first team nose tackle Popo Amuvai is out for the year. First team all uh, performer. Mm. That might open up the run game. Not to mention the uh, front seven had only provided two sacks and six TFLs in this game. I wonder if Christopher Brooks can run the rock more effectively, and I bet that BYU line will take that this challenge and run with it. This BYU line seems to be agitated, you know, and motivated and deep. So when one gets tired, another one comes in. Campbell Barrington's going, get me on the field. Yeah, yeah, and the pocket that held up for Jaron against a really good front group from Baylor, uh, and and Jaron trusting it, like, hey, I, I need just a split second more time I'm going to stay in here one second I'm going to get killed but I but if they can buy me a fraction which they did I'm going to get the ball out to Cosper I'm going to get it to Epps I'm going to get it to to uh, Roberts um, and that's what he did all game long uh, and they didn't dominate Baylor it's just in those key spots he's like I got my boys they're going to protect me um, and if I got to get out of the pocket I got to get out of the pocket I don't think he got sacked one time against Baylor I don't think so and uh, which is tremendous considering Baylor's pretty good. This is their strength. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think it is a big deal. I think it's a big deal. I think Connor Pay's going to be happy to not have that guy on his nose. Exactly. And, and what, <laughs> As what, would anybody. Right? Yeah. And what is Oregon bringing to this matchup where they're clearly better than BYU at? Obviously, where the game is played in home field matters. But when you look at quarterback, O-line, Oregon has all five starters back, one of eight teams in the country, T.J. Bass, Tremendous left tackle. That matchup's going to be fun. Uh, TBD, by the way, on uh, Tyler Batty, waiting on his right. availability after uh, a hip injury in the, uh, in the game where he didn't play much of the second half. Uh, Tunaisa Mahe, by the way, hasn't played the first two games. Hopefully BYU gets him back. But that D-line showed up, man. Max Tooley and Ben Bywater flying around. Uh, not to mention Keenan Peely and Peyton Wilgar. And this secondary is going to be challenged differently than last week. Blake Shapin did not uh, find any open receivers. Can... D'Angelo Mandel and Gabe Judy Lally and those guys uh, have a similar performance. Caleb Hayes at Oregon State, by the way, right. former Beaver who didn't like the Ducks. The receiving core. These, these are all young guys without Puka and Gunner, and, and BYU scored 76 points in two games. I think they're, I think they're just fine. It's going to be all right. It's going to be a fun game to watch. And you can watch uh, BYU football with Kalani Sataki on demand on BYUSN.com and the BYU TV app. Uh, Jaron Hall in the film room on that. We were in there with him. That's, uh, that's good stuff. Watch it anytime you want on the BYU TV app. And, uh, and also Hall on that emotional embrace with uh, Jake Oldroyd, which has now been, it's the hug scene around the world. And uh, it's, it's, it's classy stuff. Okay, and rise and shout out to a Thursday's hero and fan of the program. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation's on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU radio apps today or download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. And we invite you to subscribe, rate, and review the show. Our question of the day is this. Do you believe the matchup with Oregon will be tougher than Baylor? Our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But first, today's Rise and Shoutouts are presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics, to a BYU Football Thursday's hero and BYU Sports Nation fan, Tyler Hall. Been battling with lung cancer and has been had some really tough times. Hey, we wish you the best. We hope you have a great weekend. We hope the football team gives you a bit of a lift as well on Saturday, but we're thinking of you. Absolutely. And to Jeff Hansen and his family, many of you are familiar with Jeff's work with Cougar Sports Insider. I enjoy his work personally. His four-year-old son recovering from pneumonia, doing better, had a bit of a scare over the weekend, but back at home uh, getting oxygen. Hey, you've got this. Shout out to the Hansons. 
Back to the elite voice, Mark Edward Lynch on Instagram. Baylor plays the power game and Oregon plays the speed game, so the challenges will be different. The pressure will be heavier on our secondary versus Baylor, but as long as our boys play assignment sound football, the outcome will be the same. Bronco, is that you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's a different challenge, but I think one that BYU is ready for, especially the secondary. The ingredients for victory never change. Take care of the ball, win the line of possession, uh, minimize penalties. Absolutely. Our thanks to today's guest, Amber Whiting. It's great. Great having her. Looking forward to, to the new coots under Whiting. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Plus, get all your BYU sports content on BYUSN.com. Sorry, Dennis. No time for Dave. I'm Jerem. Shout out to Mark Bellini. Go Cougs!